Hi, I'm Logan Ballantyne and this is the fifth and final part of my series on how to create passive income from stock photography. The, um, the conclusion and the one where I will tell you my own biggest mistake. So I've said this before, stock photography is a great way of building passive income for the long term. If you keep at it, it's just something that is going to slowly grow and eventually you'll hit a tipping point where you'll be making a good steady income. And that's not going to happen immediately unless you get the, the world's only picture of something extremely unique and in demand. I don't know, first contact with extraterrestrials or something like that. For me it took less than a year before I was making any real money, which is probably fast. I did alright. For the first few months however, I was making like 40 cents, a dollar, a dollar fifty, six dollars. And that's why most people give up on stock photography. They see these numbers and they think, well, oh, it's never gonna get any better. Helpful and concerned friends and family members will tell you that you're wasting your time and you should just give up on it. Don't give up, keep at it. When are you gonna see a return though? Well, it's hard to tell. It's a different market now. But when I started out, it wasn't until I had around a thousand images published across six or seven sites that I started seeing some uh, some more uplifting numbers in it, in my sales. So here's a metric that used to be fairly accurate. Once you have over a thousand images, again, depending on your niche and the quality of your images, you might expect to earn around 25 cents per image per month. So you can do the math yourself. If, for example, you want to be earning $500 passive income from stock photography every month, you would need at least 500 divided by 0.25 images, so 2,000 high quality images. But just having 2,000 images uh, just sitting there is not going to be sustainable. Like I said before, you need to keep uploading and keep up the momentum in order for, for stock sites to keep promoting your work, uh, keep promoting your portfolio in the search results. None of the agencies talk about how their algorithms work, but this is the one thing that they all say upload more to earn more. Of course they're going to say that because they want you to, to keep giving them new content so they can grow their collection of images. And this is where branding becomes important as well. When you start uploading you want to choose a simple, easy to say and remember username across all the sites that you submit to. It just helps to kind of add to your presence, especially when you're uploading all the time and buy a see your brand up there in the most recent search results. Also, if people credit you for your photos, then that's uh, free promotion for your brand across the internet, and that's extra weight for your name in search results. I forgot to mention this in the episode about ranking and keywording, but um, when you export your files from Lightroom or whatever, whatever you're using, Capture One maybe, include your brand in the file name. Another thing you want to do is uh, get on Instagram, Pinterest, similar platforms where you can post your photos. If you're worried about people stealing your images, then add watermarks with your brand name or website address. So one mistake I made early on was not thinking about this as a business and not branding properly from the outset. Once you've signed up, some of the agencies won't allow you to change your name. Um, and I've always been terrible at maintaining a presence on social media. Wanna find me on Twitter? Link below. I think I've got like one tweet. Now, my biggest mistake however, here it is was being complacent. At the peak of my stock photography career, I couldn't quite believe how much I was earning and I thought that I had arrived. Then a few things happened in my life in the a, in a space of a year. I moved house and a phone company screwed up my broadband installation, which meant that I was without internet for two months and unable to upload anything. Then I bought a house that needed a lot of work. The roof was rotten. It needed new walls, heating. To save money I did a lot of work myself and I got some good home renovation stock photos. At this point my earnings were still going strong, no change, um, even though I hadn't uploaded for a couple of months so I thought alright I'm, I'm just gonna dedicate most of my time to finishing this house and we'll be done in like four months whatever. My earnings are good, I can take a short break from the, uh, the stock photography thing and I'll get straight back into it. It's now four years later and I'm still doing work on my house. Now the same year I bought the house, I became a dad. So even though I've been taking and selling photos of my son successfully from day one, that meant less time shooting and less time uploading. Essentially I hardly uploaded anything new on a regular basis for an entire year and my sales never recovered from that. 
I was still earning enough to sustain my lifestyle for that year, which is, I suppose, is, uh, is quite enviable. Earning enough passive income to not work for a year. It was not until a few months into the following year that my portfolio ran out of steam. But when it did, it was a major hit and it came quite suddenly. So I'll show my earnings curve from when I started stock photography. So as you can see, if you want to make money from stock photography consistently, you need to keep uploading. Like I said, I don't know how the algorithms work. Maybe having a big portfolio doesn't matter. I've got over 16,000 files online now. You'd think that having lots of images would give you a better chance of being found, but maybe the stock sites just reward contributors who are active and upload little and often. Yeah, so if you only take away one or two things from these videos, it's uh, one, find your niche, and two, keep uploading. All right, so I tried to give as much information as possible about stock photography here, drawing from my own personal experience. If you think there's something I should elaborate on, in, uh, in more detail, or if there's anything else you think I should do a video on, let me know in the comments. Once again, I hope I have been able to offer you some useful information and that you may go out and start your own successful journey in stock photography, or whatever else you choose to do. May your journey be happy and prosperous. Okay. Bye.